This is part two of a guide to show you how to change your Battle for Skull Pass Night Goblins into Hobgoblins for use in your Chaos Dwarf armies. In the last step we cut them all apart and we pinned them together like this so that we can start putting green stuff on them. Uh, you can see it's basically like an armature now that he's set up and he's nice and glued snugly in there now. So we're going to be making them in this step we're going to fill them in with a little more green stuff to get them to more closely resemble this guy here. What I use for green stuff is I use a uh, um, Needite from Gale Force 9. They come in these two large rolls. It's uh, pretty inexpensive. It's about $20 Canadian, so about $15 American. Uh, they're priced at, so it's pretty cheap and you get a ton and it lasts for a really, really long time. Also, one thing I just forgot about in the first part. What you want to do is once you've done cutting all of this guy away, like I've showed you in the last step, you want to also cut right under his chin. Because he has a hood, and we want to change it into a hat, we want to cut the underside so it doesn't look like there's a bottom part of a hood there. So we just want to make it look like the hat's sitting on his head. So it's pretty simple, you just cut that away. Just like that. And if you need to sand it down or whatever, that's cool. Just like that. Okay. So here's our guy we're going to use. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some green stuff around the wire on his legs. Just to build up his legs. In this step, depending on how comfortable you are with green stuff, you don't have to do all the steps at once but uh, right now I'm just trying to bulk out his legs so I'm going to be using my sculpting tool again just like I did in my previous videos and you're just trying to match the shape of a normal leg so you know you don't have to get too fancy but you can mimic a calf muscle if you calf muscle if you, uh, you know, want to try that So once you think you've got enough, you can take out the excess green stuff. And whatever you're left with is a good shape. If anything, if you want to sculpt something, try to sculpt a knee. It's pretty easy, it's just a round bulb straight below his skirt. And once you've got a knee, it'll pretty much look like a leg no matter what you do. So I've got a knee sticking out. And I'm going to try and make it look like a calf muscle at the back if I can. Pretty basic. So I just put a leg on there with a knee. Remember to apply water to your sculpting tool so that the green stuff doesn't stick too much. Now work on this second leg. Putting some water on there. Here. doesn't have to be perfect. There's not too much leg area we're filling in. But same idea, you want to build it up so there's a nice knee, knee joint. And so that it connects well with the back of his leg foot too. So that's pretty good. Two legs. Next we're going to do around his waist. Hobgoblins have really big bellies usually. That's one of their distinguishing features. So we're going to try and build up a belly. Like I said, we're only doing the shape. In the next step we might uh, we'll add some detail like some stitching and stuff over top. Over his shirt area. So you want to make it line up so it's going into his belt and you don't want to cover over his belt too much. Scare any details. On the back side, we're trying to remove that shawl region. So you want to sculpt into this shawl so that it merges with the bottom of the fabric. If 
you need more green stuff, you just grab some. Start applying it. So, I mean, the shape of a back is pretty easy to do. If you're confident, you can add some fabric folds and stuff like that. If you're not, no big deal. It should easily blend in, though. Not too tough. So same idea on the front, we want to remove that shawl region. And then we want to get a nice little wad of green stuff and try and build up his belly. So that's pretty good. If you want also you can put a quick line down his belly for his shirt. Sort of like a jacket these has. And another thing we can quickly do is add up just a little bit of green stuff. Just get a little sphere of green stuff and we can put it over his shield to cover up his icon. So once it's placed, you can just get some water on there and start smoothing it out over top. Usually I do it right to the edge of the rim. Give it a little more 3D appearance. And we've blocked out that bad moon type symbol. Okay. Now we'll quickly just throw on a curved hat. And we'll add the rest of those details in the next step. So if you've put a wire on the top like I have, it'll help as a guide. You can make your hat as big or as small as you want really. Looks like mine's too small, I'm gonna have to add some more green stuff. Green stuff is really sticky after you first mix it. If you find things are just too sticky, you can give it some time. It'll lose its stickiness over time. So there's no big rush if you want to take your time in adding the green stuff. You're just trying to make a hat that's a little more, more like a smurf almost, comes forward. So once you've got the proper shape, you're just going to blend it in. And we'll add some flaps to that later in the next step. Another optional thing you can do is add just a little bit of a hunchback. Doesn't take much green stuff. Just roll it out. Place it on his back. Same idea, you want to blend it in with that fabric. make it look like it's part of his jacket so there we've got the basic structure of all the green stuff you can see it's coming to look together pretty good and in the next step we'll add the details also if you can't really see the focus of these guys that clearly I invite you to go to my website at www.chaos-dwarfs.com and you can check out pictures of the hobgoblin conversions in the conversion section. Stay tuned for part three.